Okay, hello Year 7. Welcome to this lesson on congruent shapes and enlargements. So for this lesson, you're going to need a pen, pencil and ruler because we're going to be doing both drawing and writing. So we need all three of those things. And you're going to need, if possible, some squared paper. If you don't have any squared paper, either at least try and find some line paper or if you have a printer, I'm also going to put a document up next to this video uh, that's got some squared paper that you can download and print for yourself. All right, let's get started. So first thing we need to ask is what are congruent shapes? And congruent shapes have identical size and shape. They can be rotated or reflected, that's fine, but if you had them the same way up, they would have to have exactly the same size for every dimension, and they would have to have the same shape. So let's look through some examples and then some non-examples. These two rectangles are identically sized and exactly the same shape. They are congruent. These triangles, even though they are rotated around, if you put them both the same way up, hopefully you can see they would be the same shape and they are identically sized, therefore they are congruent. Whereas these two triangles, the shape is uh, close, but not quite, and it's the wrong size. So these are not congruent. And these rectangles, whilst being the same shape completely, are the wrong size, so they are not congruent. Okay. So bearing that in mind, I would like you please to copy each of these shapes down onto some paper and shade in the congruent parts in the same color. Okay, so preferably if you've got a couple of different colors, then this will help you out. If not, if you've just got your pencil, then just use different coloring techniques, maybe use lines in one and dots in another pair and things like that. Okay, but try and color in all the congruent shapes. They've shown you for part A how you do it. You can see the four blue triangles are congruent and the two green little rectangles are congruent whereas the big rectangle in the middle has nothing else that's exactly the same size and shape, so that is not congruent to anything. Okay, so B and C, pause the video, give that a go, please. Okay, this is what you should have come up with then. Hopefully with B, you got the two side uh, triangles as the same color and the top and bottom triangles as the same color. And then for C, even though they're all in different <coughs> rotations and reflections of each other, Hopefully you can see these four parallelograms are congruent. They are the same size, the same shape, even though some have been flipped, they still form the same shape if you put them all the same way around, okay? Question four then, copying these shapes down again, and you can see what uh, they've done is use some lines to split this shape into different pieces, uh, and they want you to make some congruent shapes. So for A, you can see this square, they've split into four congruent triangles by splitting along the diagonals. Okay, so it's using that symmetry, okay? And see if you can give this a go for B with this triangle. Again, think about that symmetry to make something congruent. And C, a little bit more difficult because there are two different types of shapes that they want you to make. But again, the symmetry is a key here, okay? Pause the video, give that a go. And here's what we should have come up with, okay? So you can see both of them initially, we split down the middle in order to still achieve that congruence. With the green triangle in B, we just needed to split it down the middle and that was it, we had our two congruent triangles. With C, once we split it down the middle, we then have these two trapezium shapes here from, you can see me tracing with the mouse, this is one trapezium, this is another trapezium, and then these trapezia we can split into one rectangle and one triangle each, and because we use that symmetry we know that if we do the same cut on this side as this side that we will end up with the congruent sets, okay? Question five then, so we are told straight away that these triangles are congruent. So we know that if they were the correct way around, that certain lengths and angles would correspond. They'd be the same uh, size or length. So I would like you please to match these up, pause the video and copy and complete the sentences in full 
in your book, please. If you need to copy down the diagrams as well, then do, but at least copy and complete the sentences. Okay, let's see how you got on. So we can see X and U would be the same sides. Hopefully we could see that and it would be this diagonal side that matched and same this vertical side Y looks a lot like V. Z fits with W and then we can match our angles A with D, B with F and C with E. So if you got those really well done, if you're not sure, pause the video, have another look, see where you went wrong and see if you can uh, work out why these are the correct answers. So we've looked at congruent shapes. Now we're going to look at something else. We're going to look at how to enlarge a shape. Later on, you'll hear these enlargements being referred to as similar shapes, but we don't need that now. We just need to know that we're enlarging things. And when we enlarge something, we multiply each side by a scale factor, okay? So in this example, it's a scale factor of two. This side of one square, we've multiplied by two to get two squares. <coughs> this two square line, we're gonna multiply by two to get a four square line, okay? And that's how these work. So you'll always have your original. We will multiply by scale factor two, this object, and it will give you your new enlarged image, okay? If this were a scale factor of three, then this one would become three, and this two would become six, because we'd be multiplying by three. If it were five, this one would become five, and this two would become 10, because we multiplied by five. And that's all we're doing with these enlargements. Whatever the scale factor is, that just means every single line we're going to multiply by that amount, and that's going to be our new side length. So we're gonna try this out now. You're gonna have a go at question six, please. We'll go through these one at a time. So if you think you're confident, have a go at all of them, but at least have a go at A for me, please. Okay, pause the video, give that a go. And let's see how you did with A. So the first one, it's a scale factor of three. So we know each side length had to be multiplied by three. So this one would become a three and this two would become a six. So if you got that really well done, and then the scale factor of five, so this one would become five, and this two would become 10, okay? So if you got that really well done, you're starting to get the hang of this. Now try for these more difficult ones, for B and C, you've got to be really careful because there are a lot of different lines, and remember, that enlargement has to happen for every single line. So pause the video, give that a go if you haven't already. Okay, and let's see what we came up with. So more squares to count, but let's go through this. So this long line of three at the top, when it's a scale factor of three, will become nine. This one will be a three, but also this one will be a three, this one will be a three, this one this one, this one, and this one, these are all going to be threes. You've got to be really careful to make sure you've enlarged every single line. Once you've done enough of them, hopefully uh, the rest of it should be able to fill itself in, but you've just got to be really careful that every single line is enlarged. I have seen a lot of uh, times where people remember to enlarge this side and maybe this side, but then they've left all the rest of these as being one square and then it doesn't look right. It isn't similar, it's not enlarged. It's a completely different shape now, okay? So just make sure every single line is filled in, okay? With C, let's see how you did if you haven't already had a go at that. If you, have put, uh, if you haven't paused the video now, but the answers for C are as follows. Okay, <clears throat> so with these ones, I would always leave the diagonals until last. And the reason for that is that if you've enlarged these straight lines properly that are uh, 
following along the grid lines, then the diagonal should sort itself out. So long as you've got the two points connect that it connects to correctly, then the line should be the correct length. So this one should become a three or a five. This two should become a six or a 10. This three should become a nine or a 15. And then this diagonal line should automatically be enlarged if you've got the rest of these sides correct, okay? <clears throat> so hopefully you're starting to see the pattern here. Uh, as you get through this, um, through the years, you'll, you'll see uh, more difficult shapes and more difficult scale factors. But for now, hopefully you can see this is how we do it every time. Whatever the scale factor is, that just means we multiply each side by that number and that will give us our enlarged side length. Okay, so we've got a real life scenario here. In a school play, to make the actors look very small, all the props need to be 15 times their real size. So another way of saying that from what we've just looked at is our scale factor is 15, okay? And we're told a real DVD case is 15 millimeters thick. So how thick must the DVD case in the play be? And then be really careful at the end because it also asks you to give your answer in centimeters. Okay. So think about are you going to convert your answer first and then multiply, or are you going to multiply your answer first and then convert? That's completely up to you. Use your calculator if you need to. Okay. Uh, or if you'd like, use some written methods. And at some point, you're going to have to convert from millimeters to centimeters but it's up to you whether you do that before you multiply or after you multiply, okay? And then think how many millimeters are there in a centimeter, okay? Similarly with B, a real calculator is 14 centimeters long, how long in the play, but then it asks you to convert that into meters, okay? So again, think about when you're going to do that. Okay, so pause the video, give that a go. Okay, let's have a look at the answers. So again, if you kept it as 225 millimeters, then you need to do that last conversion at the end. So please correct that in some pencil. Okay, and with B, similarly, if you said 210 centimeters and left it at that, then add those corrections in pencil because that would lose you a mark in a test, okay? We have to be really careful when it asks us to give an answer in centimeters or meters or in any unit, we have to convert into that unit. Otherwise, the examiners can take marks away from us, okay? And question eight then. So we've got all of these objects and images here. Remember the object is our original and the image is the enlarged version, okay? And we need to give the ratio in its simplest form, okay? So use one of these sides to compare, and then we can make a ratio. I'll go through that in a second for those who aren't sure, and write the scale factor of the enlargement. So before we've seen what a scale factor can do, so you've now got to work out the scale factor by yourself. If you want to completely have a go at all three of these by yourself, pause the video right now. But if you want a head start, I'm going to go through part A and then you'll be able to do B and C by yourself, okay? So for A part one, we've got to write the ratio of the length of the side to the corresponding uh, length in the image. So I'm going to pick a simple side, I'm gonna pick uh, the object side that only has one as its length, and the corresponding line is here, and it's three. So the ratio of object to image must be one to three, okay? Um, if this had been a different side length, say I'd gone here from two, to six, it would ask me eventually to give the ratio in the simplest form. Remember to simplify a ratio, it's just like how we simplify a fraction. We'd see that two and six both divide by two, so we'd divide it into one to three. So once we have that ratio, we can then see 
that the image is going to be three times the size of the object. So we know our scale factor is three. So pause the video now, have a go at B and C if you hadn't already. And here are your answers. Okay, so be careful as well. For B, if you left it as two to four, remember you have to simplify, so that would become one to two. Okay, with C, hopefully that one wasn't too much of an issue because there was a side length of one that becomes a side length of four. But if you did the two to eight, remember to add in the correction, simplify it to one to four. And then hopefully those should have been the scale factors that you got. Okay, number nine. Photo printing service offers the following prints. And Sam wants one to be an enlargement of the other. So each of these you're going to go through and explain whether or not it's an enlargement and give a sentence, please, explaining either why it is an enlargement or why it is not an enlargement. Okay, let's have a look through the answers. So hopefully you remembered that for something to be an enlargement, it would have to have the same scale factor in every dimension. Okay, so with A, yes, it would be an enlargement because both of them are twice the size, it's a scale factor of two. For B, hopefully you can see it's not uh, an enlargement. They try and trick you here by having it where you can subtract one from both. But remember, we don't use subtraction with enlargement, we use multiplication. And if you found out the scale factor from eight to seven, it's not the same as six to five, okay? And you can see there the answers you would have got if you did those scale factors. And for C, the answer is actually yes. So we can see both uh, dimensions would go from eight to five. So even though it's a decimal scale factor. We know that it starts off as a square. We can see here it's an eight by eight and it will finish as a square, a five by five. Okay, so if you thought it was no because you couldn't see uh, an immediate multiplier, hopefully you can see now the logic of if both sides had the same length, it must be a square. So then any enlargements must also be a square. Okay, and remember, <laughs> even though. Uh, yeah, even when one is bigger than the other, or maybe sometimes your enlargement in, uh, in inverted quotes is uh, smaller than your original, an enlargement just means you've put a scale factor to it. So an enlargement can actually be smaller. It just means that it's got the, exactly the same shape, but is a different size, okay? So, uh, that's going to be it for today's lesson. If you've got any questions, then please feel free to email me or email your regular class teacher if it's not me, uh, and we'll happily walk you through it. Um, and if you want any more questions, then uh, there should be some available on MyMaths or on BBC Bite Size. Okay, thank you very much. I will see you next week.